In this video, we'll be going over the fundamentals of the power loop, the science behind it, how you can improve your power loops, and how you can practice it in the liftoff FPV simulator. Now, before we get started, let's give a big shout out to GetFPV for making this video possible. Cheers, GetFPV. All right, let's talk about power loops. I'm sure many of you have possibly tried this before, but there are many aspects to a power loop that makes it look smooth and in control. There are also different types of power loops for more advanced flying, such as the proximity power loop and sideways power loop, but we'll cover those in a different video. To pull off a successful power loop, it definitely helps if your quad is set up correctly for this. Camera angle plays a major role in the difficulty of a power loop. If your camera angle is low, the power loop will be more difficult. If your camera angle is between 50 to 60 degrees in what I call the FPV angle sweet spot, then it will be a lot easier. The reason for this is simple. With a low camera angle, it's not as easy to quote unquote look ahead and see where you're going. You need to use more intuition and know where you are in the power loop. With your camera angle in the sweet spot, however, you'll be able to see where you are going before it even happens. This is critical in a successful power loop. Before we start practicing this for real, let's set up our track. For this exercise, you will need one gate, two flags and some ground markers. Place one gate in the center of the field with two flags on the sides. Also place some ground markers in a straight line through the gate. This will ensure that you keep a straight line during the approach. And that's it, just ensure that the area you're flying in is safe to do so. Now a power loop can be divided up into four segments. The approach, the punch, the float and the catch. The approach is the attitude and angle at which your quad approaches the object you want to power loop. The punch is the initiation of the power loop where you increase the throttle and slowly start pitching back. The float is the section at the top where you cut power as you float upside down and the catch is the section at the end where you ease onto the throttle again so you don't hit the ground. The great thing about breaking the power loop up into these four sections is that there are specific markers you can look out for to help you know in which part of the power loop you are. So let's look at each of these four sections a bit more in depth. For the approach, it's crucial to be completely level with the ground and not roll to either side. If you are rolled, your power loop will most likely not be successful as it will pull you off to the side that you roll to and you'll need to adjust mid-air or bail out of the maneuver. If your line is off too, you may not actually power loop the entire object, so it's very important to ensure that we approach on a straight line and that our quad is not pitched to either side during the approach. Now as we are moving under the object we want to power loop and it starts to go out of sight, we can assume that we've passed the object and can safely transition from the approach and into the punch. Now before we move into the next section, I would sincerely appreciate it if you considered liking the video and subscribing to the channel. This really helps with the YouTube algorithm and it'll allow me to keep making these videos. Please leave a comment too, I try and reply to all the comments I get. Now moving on to the punch. For this you need to slowly start increasing your throttle as soon as you've passed under or through the object which you want to power loop. As you increase your throttle, you'll also want to slowly start pitching up. The pitch will determine the size of the power loop. More pitch equals a smaller power loop and less pitch equals a bigger power loop. The amount of throttle you apply during your punch will also have an effect on this. One more thing to take into consideration during the punch is the size of the object you're power looping. If it's a longer object, you will need to increase your throttle as you reach the end of the punch section of the power loop. This will ensure that you build enough momentum for the next section so that you'll float back over the entire object. If however the object that you're power looping is maybe a gate, then you won't need a punch at the end as you don't need to float that far. Next, we'll look at the transition from the punch into the float. There is a marker to look out for that signals this transition and this is what I think is probably the most important thing when doing power loops. This will make it pretty easy to not get these wrong. If you always transition at this point, you'll very likely have a successful power loop. And if you don't use this marker though, then you'll have to do the transition on instinct, which isn't a bad thing, but it does make it quite a bit more difficult to consistently get right. So what is this transition point? It's really simple. It's the horizon. As you're pitching back through your punch, you will almost completely cut back on the throttle as soon as you see the horizon. 
If you transition into the float before you see the horizon, you likely won't clear the object you're power looping. And if you transition into the float way after the horizon, then you'll quickly start flying down as your quad will be upside down with the throttle open. As you can see in this demonstration, once you see the horizon, the quad is not facing completely down. So this is a great time to cut back on the throttle and start to float. Now, as you are floating through the air like an eagle on a Sunday afternoon, a bit corny, I know, but to me, this is one of the coolest moments in FPV. Everything feels like it becomes slow motion and it just feels so freeing to defy gravity. This moment doesn't last long though. And if you're not careful, you'll very likely smash into the ground. The great thing is that there is a transition point to look out for as well, which is the point where you need to start applying throttle again and transition from the float into the catch. The transition point does sometimes vary a little and you may need to use some more intuition here, but generally, as soon as the entry point of the power loop reaches the center of my screen, I will slowly start to apply throttle again. Throttle management is key during the catch and a smooth power loop will see a smooth onset of throttle during the catch, giving the impression of one seamless flow throughout the entire maneuver. And that's it. You've completed your first power loop. And if this isn't your first power loop, then if you follow this technique, it will definitely help you nail them a lot more consistently. The great thing about power loops is that it's just that, a loop where the end point is the same as the start point. So you can practice that trick over and over again without having to reset your approach. Now, as always, I highly recommend that you take the time to practice this trick on the liftoff FPV simulator. There are no specific tracks to download for this, as there are many different types of obstacles that you can power loop. So just go on to FreeFly and start playing around with it. As you get more comfortable with normal power loops, you can start adding trick combinations to this during the float. And as you start getting more comfortable with that too, you can add proximity into the equation as well. There are so many more tricks to progress into after the basic power loop, but I'll cover those in the next video. I'll also be hosting a live stream on the GetFPV YouTube channel where I will go over the power loop in more detail, answer any questions you may have, and also fly with you, the community, at the same time. If you are interested in joining this live stream, check out the GetFPV Facebook group or subscribe to the GetFPV email newsletter to get the details on this. If you are watching this a week after this video has uploaded, then you can find a recording of this live stream on the GetFPV YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.